Welcome to this YouTube channel and to my series on becoming more of a complete musician with the guitar. And the first thing you'll notice is that I don't have a guitar in my hands tonight and there's a good reason for that. I've been playing close to 25 years and obsessed with the guitar and all things music much longer than that, really my entire life, back to my earliest conscious memories and I've been told before that. So in the process of learning and being involved with music and teaching others and just being around it 24 hours a day, seven days a week, basically my whole life, I have really come to realize that the real stumbling blocks that we all face, and I face them too, they're remarkably similar regardless of where you're at in your musical journey. Whether you have been playing many, many years and are a complete virtuoso, or just beginning, or even maybe haven't started yet and just have the guitar in your hands for the very first time, and are wondering what it's all about. And the big stumbling block is not knowing how to go from point A to point B. And I think more often than not, not knowing how to go from point A to point B, it's all wrapped up in not really having a clear understanding or sense of why we're doing this in the first place. The whole thing about the guitar is it's supposed to be fun. And there are a lot of different reasons for playing the guitar all sorts of ones and a lot of ones that have been joked about for decades but you know some some of them are actually valid and, and do motivate people but you know is your reason for picking up the guitar to just join a rock and roll band and get rich and famous and meet girls if that's true that's an external motivation and i've found just in my relationships with other players and doing this myself and again just being completely eaten up with the guitar as long as the motivation is from outside, an external motivation can only sustain you for a finite amount of time. Sooner or later, the well runs dry and it stops being fun and you stop progressing on your instrument. Even if you've gotten somewhat good at it, you know, or, or a proficient level, enough to go out and even start, you know, playing some basic gigs, still, in order to keep progressing, there's gotta be something else driving you. And I've found time and time again that when the motivation comes from within, that's not a problem. Everything just flows. With an external motivation, you've set yourself up for a lot of self-judgment and a lot of just sort of vicious cycles, really, of basing your progress on an external yardstick. Where are you in relation to these goals? And that doesn't really work for being a lifetime practicing musician. As far as just playing music and loving the act of playing music and being connected to the joy of playing music, that'll sustain you. So in the process of doing that, it's all nice and, and lofty, but that begs the question, how do we cultivate that? And it's not that complicated. The first thing is just remembering why you started playing guitar in the first place. We probably started playing all of us because something moved us. We saw something beautiful in it. We heard something that inspired us. I remember like drooling over Stratocasters in the music store, just like completely enamored with, with the beauty of this shape of an instrument and all kinds of reasons that were in, inherently wrapped up in just wanting to be closer to this thing called music. And it's a lot of fun keeping that in mind that it's supposed to be fun no matter where you're at. And as far as the other thing goes, you're just always trying to communicate. These things are inherent in life itself. And if you can remember that it's supposed to be fun and that we have a basic innate need to communicate with one another, whether we play a musical instrument or not, that really is what it becomes all about, trying to maintain some sense of playfulness and fun with the guitar and hopefully say something that matters at least somewhat. So as far as how we go about it with those things in mind, it becomes a bit less daunting and, and a bit less esoteric. It's just like breathing. I never really thought about practicing the guitar, ever. It was just picking it up and playing it. And I know, you know, this great a great Czech quote about that, you know, it takes a lot of, a lot of hard work or whatever he used, 
you know, as, as the description. And then he corrected himself and said, or, or I should say, just play, because that's what it amounts to if you love it. So as far as just picking up the guitar and doing what you love, I found that in addition to keeping these things in mind consciously, also just staying connected to music as a fan was a tremendous deal. I've been a voracious record collector and listener and completely consumed by just enjoying being a fan every bit as much as a player my entire life. And that's been a, a great benefit. Um, however you do it, going out to local gigs, support your local music community, take part in a community, join a band, you know, do whatever it is that gets you in the act of making music and hanging out with like-minded people and having a good time with the guitar. And then on top of that, on top of all of that, then we get into the nuts and bolts and the technical aspects. Well, how do you communicate with the guitar? There are sometimes certain techniques that you need in order to say what you want to say. So that is where technique enters the picture. And I've found that practicing a technique to communicate something is way more beneficial than just sitting down to master a technique for the sake of having it in your back pocket. Sooner or later, you need to be able to use everything you're practicing. Any piece of music, any song, any lick, any approach to the instrument itself. So all the technique in, in my journey has been driven by the desire to communicate something. In my case, ever since I was a very young, I've been such a tremendous fan of the blues guitar players, but that was my desire, was to communicate something at least close to the beauty I heard in that. And then along came Chet Atkins and Jerry Reed and all the great finger pickers and certainly Jimi Hendrix. I think of Jimi as a blues player from Mars, though. I mean, Jimi was certainly just among, among Clapton and Cream and the Jeff Beck group and certainly all that very just magical 60s blues rock stuff. So at any rate, as far as communicating goes, that's where we get into specific techniques. And I want to talk about those in depth in subsequent videos, but you know, including things like string bending techniques, different approaches to a really musical smooth vibrato, and right and left hand techniques in particular, as far as tone goes, precise finger pl placement in the left hand, as far as just coordination and having everything flow right, the right and left hands should be in concert with one another. It's the whole thing. These guys, they're just working together. And uh, then certainly any kind of finger picking thing, you want to have all that stuff flowing together. So things like that and, you know, alternate picking and um, specific things that we will get into. But the primary thing is to just have fun with the guitar and to take everything with a grain of salt. It's like, you're much better than your last solo was, whether your last solo was great or not. That's really, that's all in the past. The thing about getting better and progressing is to stay in the present moment and the past is gone. You know, so as, as a great mentor of mine once said, burn bridges and don't look back. You know, and that's certainly true creatively and musically. You're just always reaching for the next thing. You know, and you're in an ever expanding state of, of improvement, hopefully. So hopefully some of that gives us a bit of perspective for how we'll be approaching things throughout this series and be sure to subscribe to the channel, check out the website, seanweaver.com. I'm gonna get that updated soon. And uh, we will follow up in a bit with some more guitar specific things.